The Declaration of Independence was officially adopted by Congress on this day 241 years ago. To celebrate the 4th of July, the New York Public Library displayed its rare copy of the Declaration, handwritten by Thomas Jefferson. It features Jefferson's condemnation of the slave trade. But that passage was dropped in the final version of the document to appease Southern delegates. The manuscript is one of only two complete copies known to have survived intact. Historian Kenneth Davis. C. Davis is the best-selling author of Don't Know Much About History and In the Shadow of Liberty. Uh, we are pleased to have him back here at this table. Good to uh, see you, a sir. A pleasure to be with you. Good happy, morning and happy, happy, happy fourth. Happy, happy fourth. Independence Day to all of you. I'm stuck with your Im an image of you as Tom Cruise and Rick. <laughs> uh, Singing so, and dancing. Uh, I have to get that out of my please, head. Please, yes, remove immediately. So I'm saying happy fourth. Dana's saying happy Independence Day. Both are appropriate. Yeah. John Adams would say that we should have said happy July 2nd. That was the date on which Congress actually approved a resolution of independence. He wrote home to Abigail, this is the day that will go down in history. We'll celebrate with parades and pomp and church bells ringing. He was just off by two days. It's the fourth and the adoption of the Declaration that becomes the um, uh, the American birthday. I'm Smart. always surprised at what little I know about history. The basic things that you learned that you're kind of surprised took a different turn. George Washington, for instance, where was he at the signing of the Declaration? He did not sign the Declaration of Independence. He was actually here in New York City. Of course, Washington had taken over the Continental Army a year before, uh, gone up to Cambridge first, and then the British left Boston and came down to New York. Washington had the troops here. The declaration was sent to him. He had it read aloud to the troops on July 9th. Uh, they went out then and tore down a statue of King George III, and legend has it melted it down into bullets. And Hamilton would have been him, with him at the time, Washington that is. Hamilton would have been with Washington at the time. Uh, that was then the lead up to the Battle of New York, which was not a happy moment for Hamilton or Washington. It was a tr tremendous defeat for the Continental Army. It, it, you know, Rena said there are things about history you're surprised that you don't know. What about George Washington? What, what don't we know that the history books haven't taught us about him? Well, he didn't chop down a cherry tree, so let's get rid of that. <laughs> right. uh, you know, he is a fascinating character in so many ways. I think the thing that we, I always must come back to because we don't discuss it is what you mentioned in terms of the Declaration. Washington also was a slaveholder, uh, was one of the largest slaveholders at the time, in fact, in 1776. And he was already beginning to wrestle with that problem, this contradiction. How do we fight for liberty yet keep people in chains? And so that's, that's a problem. You mentioned Jefferson uh, condemning slavery and, and, the, and the Southerners objecting to it. But Jefferson also noted that a great many men of the North objected because they were making a good deal of money transporting slaves. There were slaves in every one of the 13 colonies. Jeff I was going to say, Jefferson wrote a condemnation of slavery in <coughs> one of the versions. That's of right. His draft, which the, the library has, the New York Public Library has, a fair copy, he made it a few days afterwards. It includes this long denunciation of slavery as what he called the execrable commerce. Um, again, how could he denounce slavery while keeping Practicing slaves? Practicing it. Yeah. That was taken out. Uh, I can tell you that, like all writers, Jefferson was not happy at being edited by the Congress I for bet. two days. Uh, but that, in particular, was taken out. And it is this great contradiction. A nation conceived in liberty is also born in shackles. And I think we still have to balance that out when we look at these great men and what they accomplished. They did risk life, liberty, and, and their fortunes, their sacred honor. They would have been strung up if they had been caught. But they also were fighting to pre preserve and protect this crime against humanity called slavery. I wish I had learned more about women in American history. Sally Hemings, we're learning so much more about her in recent years, who uh, Je Thomas Jefferson fathered six children with. They just recently discovered her living quarters. What a wow moment that was wow. yesterday, seeing the news from Monticello that they discovered the room in which Sally Hemings may have lived. There's still a lot of work to be done mm -hmm. to ascertain what exactly went on there. Of course, just a, a background, Sally Hemings, uh, is 30 years younger than Thomas mm -hmm. Jefferson when uh, and he meets her when she's 14 essentially she's taking care of his own daughter she comes to Paris she's sent as a 14 year old with a nine year old girl on a ship across the sea it was very different times of course and that's when he first meets her um, Sally Hemings is Jefferson's late wife's half-sister we always have to remember that this 
it's how close these connections were. This is not an abstraction. This is a human face. Right. That's why I wrote this book, In the Shadow of Liberty, to put a human face on this thing we call slavery. What about Betsy Ross? Mm -hmm. So we, we talk about the American flag and how the American flag has then changed. So her family says she was the one who sewed the original Stars and Stripes, right? Is that true? The legend was that Washington came in and he got his French cuffs sewn by Betsy Ross. She was a seamstress in Philadelphia. Um, but the, the flag story is pretty much a creation handed down by the family. She did sew flags for uh, Philadelphia uh, or Pennsylvania, state flags for their Navy. Um, more interesting is a man you've probably never heard of named Francis. Francis Hopkinson, one of the 56 signers. He actually took credit for the design of the flag as we know it, the Stars and Stripes. He submitted a bill to Congress asking for payment for his services. Oh. He wanted a quarter cask of the public wine. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know there was the public wine. Uh, but um, they turned him down because he was already on the pay uh, payroll. They didn't want double dipping. But th this is, these are the no human stories exactly. behind the dates and the battles and the speeches. And it is important to remember Remember that these were real people doing real things. Yeah, definitely history coming alive here with these pages. Thank you so much, Thank you. Kenneth C. Davis, for joining us.